Okay, Connor, now you're just insulting me. Well, that was not my intention, but I'm glad to hear it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the recurring jokes and motifs from this The Big Bang Theory prequel that have us laughing time and time again. Some plot points will be discussed, so this is your spoiler alert. I think I hear it. You do? Yeah. It's coming out of your face. Number 10. Connie's Love Entanglements we absolutely love how young Sheldon portrays Connie Tucker as so much more than just the Cooper kids anymore. She's a strong, spirited woman in her golden years, practically batting admirers away. And Meemaw got a date with the coach. What? It was a productive afternoon. Fortunately for us, this leads to ample hilarity as men practically fall off their chairs and get into fights over her. We've seen Dr. Sturgis facing off with Dale out of sheer jealousy, and even poor Ira got caught up in the love game more than once. But you're still hung up on John, and I don't want to have my heart broken again, so I'm going to respectfully pass. Unbelievable. However, perhaps the funniest duels for Connie's heart take place between Dr. Sturgis and Dr. Linkletter. Honestly, seeing the lengths these two will go to to win her affection never gets old. No using Sheldon to win points with Connie. But he likes me better than you. That's why I brought it up. Fine. 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 Number 9. Mary's Vices Mary Cooper is a proud, God-fearing Christian who strives to live a virtuous life. Yet, when she's especially stressed or agitated, she tends to fall back on some rebellious habits from her carefree youth. Whoa, pace yourself, cowgirl. I'm fine. Now, are we gonna shoot pool or not? You bet. Sheldon hinted at this in The Big Bang Theory, but seeing Mary in action is far more entertaining. Mom smokes in the car. <laughs> Jesus is okay with it, but we can't tell Dad. <laughs> Whether she's sneaking a secret smoke with Pastor Rob or knocking back some liquid courage, Mary proves that her defiant teen spirit is still alive and eager to come out and play. Seeing her let her guard down reveals a side of her that's both relatable and charming. We simply love these glimpses into her vibrant and multifaceted character. We can always ask for forgiveness. You have to really mean it. Trust me, when I wake up with this taste in my mouth, I'll mean it. <laughs> I guess it reminds me of being young. Mm. Number 8. The Opening Sequence In the early days, the title sequence saw Sheldon donned in cowboy boots and armed with a briefcase, gazing into the distance. A cow comes along and momentarily breaks his focus as he sidesteps to safety. This reportedly represents Sheldon's anxieties in a world so different from his ideal reality. As the show progresses, Sheldon's family joins him, and the opening titles change to show more of his personality. We see him dress up as The Flash, Mr. Spock, and even his hero, Albert Einstein. Also, here's another running gag you might have missed. Unless, like Sheldon, you have Vulcan hearing, most of the episode titles appear as dialogue sporadically within their episode, typically shared between multiple characters. Hobbit says, physics says, Hobbit says. <sighs> Number 7. Cooper Family Dinners the dining table takes centre stage for some of the show's most hilarious moments, providing a chaotic yet relatable glimpse into the family dynamics. Okay, let's say grace. Now, Tam, when I say Jesus, feel free to say the word Buddha in your head. In fact, in one of the very first scenes, Georgie and Missy kick off a food fight during a family dinner. The table hosts everything from marital disputes and sibling squabbles to debates over brisket recipes and black holes. So if a black hole transports us to an alternate universe, would, would we even know it? Probably not. Thus, it'd be as normal as boots on a cowboy. <laughs> that is wild. In one memorable episode, two uproarious dinners unfold simultaneously. Things get awkward at the Coopers as Georgie introduces Mandy to the adults. Meanwhile, next door at the Sparkses, Sheldon and Missy throw out some wild guesses about why everyone's suddenly acting so weird. Dinner scenes almost always dish up plenty of hilarity. So, Mandy, glad you came. Number 6. Sheldon vs. Paige 
In The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon often recalls his friendless childhood, but young Sheldon offers some surprising contradictions. For instance, adult Sheldon talks about how Billy Sparks tormented him, but that doesn't exactly align with the hilariously special kid we meet in the prequel. I have a nightlight that looks like Spider-Man, but I don't turn it on. Go ahead. Why don't you turn it on? I'm afraid of spiders. Anyway, one of his most captivating friendships is with Paige, another child genius. She starts out as a sweet kid who just wants to befriend her intellectual equal, but grows into a rebellious teen who relishes challenging Sheldon. Aren't you even going to try? No. Why won't you compete with me? Because it's fun watching you get upset. What's fun about it? Everything. Their relationship provides endless entertainment, especially when Paige stumps him, which is often. Sheldon likes to believe he's the only brainiac in town, so perhaps that's why he never mentions her in adulthood. So, just to clarify... They're right, you're wrong. Dang it. How do you have more friends than me? I don't know. I don't even want them. Number 5. Sheldon vs. Pastor Jeff Based on everything we know about Sheldon as an adult, it's hardly surprising that his need to always correct his educators became a running joke. This boy does not belong in our school! Come on, Vicky, it's just the first day. Why don't we all just take a deep breath here? The hell with that! Five minutes into my math class, he questioned my credentials. Oh my While he often tested everyone's patience, he also had a habit of challenging Pastor Jeff's faith. While the pastor initially tries to humor him, he soon realizes that Sheldon might just be God's way of testing him. As the first day had just begun. So before the Big Bang? There was no Big Bang. There was only the word. Was the word kaboom? At one point, Sheldon even announces he's starting his own religion, much to the pastor's dismay. That's terrific, Sheldon, but this is a Baptist Sunday school. I know. I'm here to convert everybody. Any takers? OK, let's go have a talk with your mom. The only sin in mythology is being stupid. Still, if you were ever concerned about the salvation of octopus aliens, Sheldon's got you covered. His curious mind receives mixed responses from his family, but always gets a big laugh from us. What if an octopus Adam and Eve brought sin to their world? Would they be saved by a human Jesus or an octopus Jesus? <laughs> Number 4. Connie vs. George in-law relationships can be rather complicated, but if they're anything like George Cooper and Connie Tucker, they can also be hilarious. Connie makes no secret of how she feels about her son-in-law, and let's just say the resentment is mutual. So I saw a lawyer today. Why? I'm putting together my last will and testament. We're gonna miss you. George, don't worry. I ain't leaving him squat. That doesn't mean that they never get along, but those moments they butt heads are often the funniest. No one trades insults quite like this mother-in-law and son-in-law duo. Mom, can you make the salad? Sure. Hey, don't put any of those little tomatoes. Hey, I don't tell you how to impersonate a lump of clay. You don't tell me how to make a salad. At the end of the day, we have no doubt that they share a mutual respect and will always have each other's backs. However, their love language is basically barbed quips and endless teasing, and we're always here for it. I could buy it for him, and then y'all could pay me back when you can. OK, Connor, now you're just insulting me. Well, that was not my intention, but I'm glad to hear it. Number 3. Missy Sass Missy's quick wit and confident attitude makes her a standout character. She's no stranger to slinging out a few zingers, mostly at her family and especially at Sheldon. Did you look at the card inside? Why? That's just other people who checked out the book. It's a list of losers like you who can't find a friend. In fact, on several occasions, she's even led her twin bro astray and then sat back and watched the train crash in action. Arguably, the most hilarious part is that she knows exactly what she's doing and how to play everyone like a fiddle. That is it. You are grounded. For reading the Bible? The way you are doing it? Yes, go to your room. Okay. I don't have a donkey. But if I did, I'd take my ass out of here. As she enters her teen years, that sarcastic little cutie we came to know and love becomes even more savage and pushes boundaries more than ever. Keep your eyes on your own papers. I'm not cheating. Well, that's not what it looks like. I guess you would know what cheating looks like. Ask your husband. But don't worry, that fiery spirit also comes in handy when she's defending her family. Number 2. Georgie's Easy Money Schemes 
Georgie isn't exactly the sharpest of the Coopers, and often he says things that might make you want to facepalm. Maybe you should go across the street and apologize. I can't do that. Why not? Because if I do, it sets a bad precedent. What's Nixon got to do with it? That being said, he builds quite the business acumen. Sometimes he'll come up with some wild money-making scheme that, to be honest, like George, we're very skeptical will work. They're selling these for one dollar each. I sell them for five, and the money rolls in. Does it worry you that the store selling these things is going out of business? You have no vision. However, time and time again, Georgie proves that he knows what the people want. Or at the very least, he knows how to make people think he knows what they want. We'll admit it, we often underestimate Georgie too. Can you blame us? Still, now that we know he has what it takes, we wouldn't say no to going into business with him. I'm selling the same stuff for half the price. Cool. Oh, you got Abba's Abba's. Do I have Abba's Abba's? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Big Bang Theory Callbacks One of our favorite things about young Sheldon is connecting the dots to the Big Bang Theory. Honestly, this again? Like, we don't hear about your Nobel Prize all the time. It's not my fault people ask about it. Because you're always wearing it! You have it on right now! We've seen Sheldon discover comic books and video games and adopt his catchphrase, Bazinga. Nods to Professor Proton. Sheldon's evolving style and soft kitty are like watching the puzzle pieces fall into place. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. There's a treasure trove of Easter eggs to explore, but that's another list, which we've done. Not all the links are so happy, but hey, Big Bang laid down the groundwork. Still, we felt as excited as Sheldon drawing up a contract when we saw the kid versions of his future pals. It's those moments that truly bring it all together. Howard, turn off that Picasso game and go to sleep. What's your favorite young Sheldon recurring joke? Let us know in the comments. That is a really good idea. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.